Hello and welcome to Investors Hangout. This weekly interaction to help you learn and understand savings and investment issues is brought to you by Aditya Birla Sun Life Mutual Fund and Value Research. We're back with another episode just to answer your queries on retirement. With me, I have Thirendra and we, Thirendra, we received loads of questions, but yeah. because of the t- positive time, you won't be able to answer all of them. But let's start with, you know, some of the frequently asked ones. So the first question is, what is the drawdown rate for 30 years survival of the fund with the original rupee value intact? The simplest rule to ensure that your capital remains intact. Mm. And uh, if you are a little comfortable in the initial years to be a little flexible with your income requirement, Mm. all you need to do is just consume no more than 75% of your annual appreciation. Let me exa- explain you with an example. Mm-hmm. Assuming that you know you have accumulated for ease of computing, of uh, you know mental calculation, you have a crore of rupees mm-hmm. and you earn twelve percent. Eat half of it, consume half of it, and leave half of it there. L- let that capital. So what will happen is your one crore rupee earned twelve lakh rupees, and you took out fifty thousand rupees a month, mm-hmm. and you have left. 6 lakh rupees appreciation and your capital now has become 1 crore 6 lakh. Next year also, whatever be the appreciation or, you know, your essential requirement, Mm -hmm. take the lower of the two, whatever, you you know, whichever it is. Mm -hmm. If that year your appreciation is lower, Mm -hmm. then take lower of the appreciation, little less, else uh, higher of the two. Hmm. And if you follow this rule, you will end up with not only have keeping your principal intact, growing your principal because your need for higher income will still be there. Right. Okay. Now, many of you asked where and how to invest your retirement corpus if you're retiring soon. So, Dhirendra, what do you have to yeah. say to that? It depends. There isn't a single rule or say single you know formula which applies to everyone. Right. If you are retiring and you are your dependence on income from your retirement corpus is not much. Mm. You need to think differently. Yeah. It is your long-term money. You should think in terms of leaving a larger state. Then there could be a sub- second need that you are retiring, you have some corpus, you have some amount, and uh, you need a supplementary source of income. Mm. You will get some pension, you will get something else, and then you know you are getting some rental income, but you want to supplement it with some periodic income. Mm. Third one is that you have an absolute dependence on that income. Mm. You, 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 your retirement corpus is going not only going to need to support you, need to support you with higher income, with adjusted for inflation. Mm. Mm. So all the, these three plans needs a different approach. The first one is pretty straightforward: be mm. as much into equity if you are comfortable with it. Otherwise, be 50-50 into equity or 75-25 into 75-25 equity debt, whatever. It doesn't matter. Hmm. If you are comfortable with the ups and downs of the market, it should ideally be, you know, 50-50 just in case, you know, Hmm. uh, you get an annual rebalancing and you'll be well off. And you'll leave a much larger state. Hmm. Second is that, you know, you need supplementary income. That is also a very comfortable situation to be in because you will not be upset by the interim, you know, intermittent decline of the market. Hmm. Because when you have absolute dependence on that, you need to think a little conservatively. Third one is absolute dependence on income from your investments in retirement. There you need to really treat carefully. One is that uh, understand the scale. Hmm. You know, what is your accumulation? And is it is your requirement more than 5% reason to worry? Hmm. Then the way to go about it is, you know, first, uh, you know, think of, of asset allocation and fill the first debt allocation with uh, the senior citizen saving scheme, all the guaranteed return schemes, yeah. where you know an invest- investor can invest quite sub- you know substantial amount of money, remaining into equity to make sure that the money is growing, and all your withdrawal, all your income should be derived from those fixed income, mm. and leave your equity for the long term. Yeah. Uh, you might get uncomfortable with the intermittent decline, but you know it doesn't matter because you are going to hold it. You are not going to realize it, and equity gives superior return. But if you get nervous, then you will, you know, square up with your losses. Mm. So leave your equity aside, withdraw from your fixed income or depend on that fixed income. Maybe third part of your allocation should be into something which is, you know, short term debt fund or a bank deposit or your bank account from where you can actually keep withdrawing it. Mm. 
and not worry about it, not be anxious. Mm -hmm. And how much in equity, how much in debt is entirely a function of your scale, mm -hmm. your margin of safety. How, because uh, unfortunately, for those investors who will have very severe dependence on mm -hmm. investment and they will have just, just about enough money to generate that return, Ideally, they should be investing in equity, but they, but they should equity. not invest in equity simply because, you know, if the in the interim, in the initial stages, it goes down. So work on an asset allocation. Maybe in the initial years, you will have to think in terms of consuming less of your ap appreciation so that you are able to build some uh, margin of safety there. Right now, the next question is, and this also has been asked uh, by a lot of users, how to be financially free at 40? It's a huge challenge. It might it might sound very, you know, uh, enticing, enticing that, OK, retiring at 40, the way to be financially secure is very simple. Save as much as you can as early as possible and keep investing in equity. Make sure that you you are not getting greedy about it and you are not doing any of the mistakes which people people end up doing, which is speculating or trying to, you know, uh, get, getting greedy about those things, uh, about money and investing in something which you don't understand. Diversify, invest in equity, invest in high quality equity and be at it. Don't get unnerved by the intermittent decline because the rewards of equity comes entirely because you stick around. Have a set target in your mind. Maybe it happens at 2040 or it happens at 42 or it happens at 35, I don't know. It entirely is a function of uh, when you get lucky with the market as well. So sometime it could be, you know, a few years ahead or a few years later. Uh, but more in, most important principle is to be investing in equity as much as possible and making sure that, and how much is good enough uh, if you are actually aspiring to. At any stage of your life, you think that you have been able to generate 40 times of your monthly income requirement. Uh, say you require 50,000 rupees today, and uh, which means 6 lakh rupees today. And if you have 2.4 crore, I think in normal circumstances, of course, you know, all, all my thumb rules are useless because everybody's circumstances can change. You know, if you have old parents to look after or your child's education is still outstanding and you're aspiring for something expensive or you have, you still have to build your house. So it entirely, everybody's financial framework is different. Mm -hmm. But broadly speaking, if you have 40 times of your annual income, uh, should suffice. Uh, that should be a good start. You know, I think for most people, it will be okay. All right. Now, the next question has been sent in by Asif Sheikh. He asks, which fund is best to invest 1 crore rupees and take 1 lakh per month? Very difficult question because uh, I, ne I just need to remind you what you keep hearing on television alongside any mutual fund ad that mutual funds are subject to market risk. The value can go up and down and I would like to uh, really make it a little more uh, scary. Generally speaking, 1 lakh rupee from 1 crore rupee investment is a fairly good, is a very handsome return that you are expecting. It is almost like 12% consistent being derived on a monthly basis. Uh, I'm not very, uh, you know, doubtful about 12% return from even a 75% equity and 25% debt portfolio. What I'm worried about is 1%, you know, 1 lakh rupee to, to be derived. And even in those months where the investments, you know, when the market will take a hit or your investment will take a hit because 12% might be a reasonable demand, a re reasonable, you know, expectation. But expecting it consistently month after month because the return from equity is never in a smooth, nice smooth line. It is not like 12% year after year. It is not a deposit. Some years you get 40% like you got last year and some year you will actually be negative. You will be minus 5%, minus 10%. And uh, those are the times when you will be eating into your capital. One lakh from one crore is, uh, can be had even with a 75% uh, equity, 25% uh, fixed income. And two, three years if you get lucky with the market, on when you when you are starting off, mm. then I think it's fine. Only problem is you should not hit be hit by a bad weather in the market in the initial one or two years. All right. Now Amit Ghosh has sent in the next question. He says, if you do not need to systematically withdraw your money for at least three years, 
should you allocate it to balanced advantage funds or multi asset funds to withdraw at 8% without suffering any capital erosion or should you choose any other type of fund a uh, 8% withdrawal ra uh, rate from your balanced advantage fund is not a very unreasonable expectation mm -hmm. but uh, let me warn you that any investment which has expo equity exposure can have a period when it is not generating return mm -hmm. and that is when you will actually be withdrawing 8% so given going by what the kind of the kind of market we have been or you know if you don't get unlucky with the market in the short run 8% is a very modest uh, expectation in the long run i think you it's it's fine to uh, to expect 8% but uh, just be you know careful that if you are faced with a steep decline in the market and you are continuing with your withdrawal plan you should have some buffer so that you can stop withdrawing at that point mm -hmm. okay Now uh, Ashok says most of the knowledge resources you provide are useful yet subjective. Investment decisions are complex and require objective analysis of potential investment options. So can value research provide simple tools that could help calculate ROI combined with risk? Yeah, we are already offering you know a lot of uh, quite a few simple tools, usable, actionable. Mm -hmm. For example, in our premium uh, section, mm -hmm. uh, premium account, an investor can come and actually. he will be guided two three fund three four funds or the appropriate kind of fund hand picked by you know our analysts hmm. the analyst choice uh, with uh, uh, you know for his long term wealth build up or his accumulation or for his withdrawal plan if hmm. you are working on a income plan from your investment it is able to make very clear recommendations not only that it is able to give you all the explanations hmm. that uh, what to expect from it what not to expect and what is what is the basis of those recommendations yeah. so that is getting into the specifics but i completely agree with you that you know uh, there cannot be a standard formula for any of your requirement you know hmm. if you have a lack of rupees to invest and if i have a lack of rupees to invest our plans will be completely different based on our expectation hmm. based on our time frame based on our experiences our behavioral you know response to many of the situations in the market mm -hmm. could be very different because i have seen 2008 i have seen the early 90s uh, i have seen the euphoria time and again mm -hmm. so i i react to it differently as compared to somebody who has just not seen the full market cycle anybody who started investing 3 and a half years back mm -hmm. he will not have that exposure he will panic he sometimes he will keep, feel very confident about things or he thinks that you know market only goes up uh, to have a intermittent correction they nobody has experienced you know 5 7 years of market going nowhere hmm. or going down then it's not a pure science you know when it comes to investing i can be a long term investor with an all equity portfolio mm -hmm. i can be an equity investor with an all equity portfolio with substantial allocation to mid and small cap stocks hmm. i can be a long term equity you know investor with a with a bunch of index fund mm -hmm. i can be a you know with actively managed fund or even a balanced advantage fund that is that is also pretty mm -hmm. close to be being an all equity or a aggressive hybrid fund mm -hmm. and all of these will actually help me achieve my objective long term capital appreciation over next 10 15 20 years mm -hmm. the only problem is that you know to arrive at a formula and many a times one or the other will do better than other mm. and that we don't know there is a possibility that the index fund investor might do much better you know might be better off than the small cap investor mm. or sometimes the small cap investor might be substantially better off than the index investor it can change with the times right. uh, it can also change with the person uh, uh, person's entry point so there is a, it isn't a precise science all you have to do is follow some rules mm -hmm. so that you don't end up with a blunder uh, avoiding blunder mm. uh, is a critical thing when it comes to investing and more so in retirement right now balaji asks how to crash proof retirement corpus after building the same crash proofing your retirement corpus has two points one is that you know you have two risk which you are exposed to one is that you have, you don't have enough corpus mm -hmm. you have enough amount so for that you have to make it crash proof well ahead of time hmm. second is to actually be little flexible with your income requirement make sure that you know you have some appetite for variable income make sure that you know you are investing uh, you you in such a manner 
or your require you have to really tweak your uh, expectation mm -hmm. simply that uh, whatever be the annual return you can't consume more than that mm -hmm. that is the worst case scenario that you are consume consuming as much your investment generated in the last 12 months mm -hmm. and ideally it should not be it it should not be more than 75% you have to leave a part of it and that then it depends some years you will be very lucky you will get extraordinary return mm -hmm. some years you will be disappointed and just keep keep your income variable from this and let this be a basic rule that you are not consuming more than 75% and in years of negative return you are settling with maybe little less next year mm. uh till you are able to build a buffer on your investment which you will get lucky in a uh, couple of years in the next 4 5 years all right the next question is what should be the amount at retirement as a multiple of monthly expense at 60 years sufficient for 20 25 years in your retirement when you are investing there isn't a straight thumb rule mm -hmm. uh your monthly income requirement could be one thing but you could also have less periodic big expenditures mm -hmm. as you get older sometimes you have health exp you know medical expenses which could be higher sometimes you could have, you you will have a need for you know supplementary income or periodic uh, need which could be different from your monthly expenditure yes. which is you know visiting your children abroad or things like that so you need to have some buffer and uh, more so at in your old age when you know you have plenty of time so uh, you, you know that some of your uh, those requirement not being fulfilled might be very big deprivation mm -hmm. so i would say that for the essentials mm -hmm. it is 20 times your annual requirement if you need 50000 rupees then you know you need 6 lakh rupees every year mm. which means multiply it with 20 right. 1 crore 20 lakh rupees for your income requirement next is all the contingencies and all the extraordinary expenses that will come your way mm. uh that is something you know which is very difficult to visualize mm. foresee and anticipate but i would say just as much okay now nitin shrivastava asks um He says he would like to generate a monthly income of fifty thousand rupees. How can he plan this by investing for fifteen years? If you need fifty thousand rupees today, you need six lakh rupees per annum mm. every year, and uh, adjust it for inflation of about five percent. Mm. It'll be you know something like twelve and a half lakh rupees you need after fifteen uh, years. Most of the time, we don't factor this inflation for our future requirement. Yeah. so keep this in mind so the the money that you need is uh is 12 and a half lakh rupees every year multiplied by 20 that is the essential income requirement that is the amount which it can support mm -hmm. now to accumulate this much money i don't know how much money you can you can put every month but put as much as you can in equity to begin with mm -hmm. and if you are a regular investor then just be at it increase it with your annual uh, rise in income and see how much you can accumulate all right now the next question has been sent in by someone who is retiring in 5 years right now he has a corpus of 2.5 crore rupees in mutual funds a mixed bag of diversified funds he is investing 1 lakh rupees per month and can continue up to retirement he wants to know what more he should do nothing else you know you are doing very well mm -hmm. and good that you should be you know careful about two three things one is that uh, as you are getting closer to your retirement mm -hmm. you will get nervous mm -hmm. as and when the market goes you know uh, uh, becomes shaky once in a while mm -hmm. uh you should not get much worried about it because if you are going to retire in 5 years time you still have you know plenty of time mm -hmm. for your money to work for you mm -hmm. and all your money is not required the day you retire right and it is a myth that you know you sh should not take risk or you know you should not be exposed to market risk once you retire mm -hmm. in fact you should have reasonable exposure to market risk because that is the only way to ensure that your money is inflation protected right. uh so you maybe you know there will be a need to move a part of your money maybe 3 years income requirement more conservatively mm -hmm. into fixed income so that you are reassured that you have you know your day to day living expenses will never be compromised so that is all that you need to do uh remain invested in equity just one year before your retirement take one year se income requirement from equity put it in fixed income mm. and ideally keep doing it every one or two years okay now our next viewer has been in government service for 15 years with moderate mandatory savings in nps 
a very small part in stocks and a moderate share in mutual funds. He's 42 and wants to retire at 45. So should he invest for an early retirement? How should he invest for an early retirement? I really don't have a say in when one should retire. But generally speaking, I would say that deferring your retirement and being able to work for long is a, is a great thing. Unless you have you know some great substitution for the time that you'll be spending productively. Mm -hmm. uh, second is that you know in your NPS now it is it has become possible for government employees to choose a life stage plan mm -hmm. which can have a higher allocation. Otherwise, the default plan for government employee is just about 10-12% into equity, remaining in fixed income. Mm -hmm. So it's a very conservative plan. And now it has become possible to so choose the life stage plan so that you can get a higher equity exposure. Mm -hmm. Then comes, you know, invest in equity as much as you can. can and uh, plan to retire only if you think that, you know, you have 20 to 30 times of your, you know, annual income requirement as, you know, accumulation after some of the big expenditure. Right. Because, you know, if even if you have 30 years of, you know, income requirement, uh, uh, which will generate income for you, if you have to spend a lot of money in building a house, or if you have to spend a lot of money in, uh, you know, your child's education, mm -hmm. or any other big spending plan, uh, then factor that as well. Now, the next viewer says, when you mention investing post-retirement, can we put our retirement money in conservative hybrid funds where the fund house allocates 20% to debt and the remaining to equity? Isn't this better as instead of managing it ourselves, it will be handled by the experts at the fund houses? If you are investing all your lifetime accumulation into equity mm -hmm. and you want to invest in a manner that it is a little more stable, a steadier uh, take on growth, then you know the aggressive hybrid fund which is about this much, you know, they invest 75% into equity, 25% into debt. And uh, this is ideal because the biggest advantage here is that if you do this yourself, you will have to periodically sell something mm. to buy something else as and when they, you know, one, one part of the, your investment does well. Mm. In case of mutual fund, one great advantage is that you are able to defer all the tax uh, on this. So the mutual fund, uh, you know, the fund manager will keep doing, uh, changing the allocation will keep rebalancing it and it has no tax incidence for you whatsoever. So not conservative hybrid fund, but aggressive hybrid funds. Aggressive is hybrid right fund choice. is one thing. But you know, even for conservative hybrid fund, the same rule applies because mutual fund is very efficient when it comes as a tax deferral. Right. L you know, uh, let me explain you this concept because many people are unable to appreciate that what is this created, you know, what is this advantage. Assuming that you buy, uh, you invest in a deposit, hmm. The money that you get by way of interest every year is, is taxable, whether you realize it or not, whether you, it's a, even if it's a cumulative plan, you are mm. supposed to pay taxes on, on the interest income on your investments. Right. Second is that if you buy a bond, same treatment, all the coupon, all the interest that you earn is taxable. If you invest in equity, assuming that you are able to build a great equity portfolio and you are able to, you know, you book some 25% of the gains every year that money will become taxable mm. uh, and short term gains or long term gains and 10% or 15% depending on uh, when you booked it. In case of mutual fund, mm. you put your money and the fund manager takes care of everything. He's investing, he's selling, he's buying, he's rebalancing and uh, you're not liable to pay any taxes till you realize the gains. Mm. And only when you realize the gains, only on that component of that realization, you, all your money might keep accumulating, mm -hmm. but only on the component which has appreciated and the appreciation which you have realized, only that is taxable. So uh, that's wonderful. You know, this is pro this proves to be one of the greatest efficiency of mutual fund. Now, the last question has been sent in by P.S. Kashikar, who is 50 right now and has decided to retire within a few months due to health issues. He currently has a corpus of about 2.8 crore rupees, which is mostly in debt. He says PF, PPF, etc. And about 25% in equity. He wants to know if this corpus is sufficient for retirement and if any rebalancing is required. His monthly expenses are around 50 to 60,000 rupees. Yeah, I think so. Because, you know, 50 to 60,000 rupees can easily be met by, you know, what depends how much is the PPF 
uh, accumulation because one great advantage of PPF, you know, PPF, I keep discouraging people not to start their PPF account. A 15 year SIP in any equity fund will generate more return. Mm. But if somebody has accumulated in PPF, then retain it because this is the only in instrument which is absolutely safe and it generates income, which is decent. And on top of it, it is completely tax free. This is the only tax free income available to an individual investor. And given that he has this much of accumulation, 50 to 60,000 rupees will be absolutely not a problem. 25% into equity will also ensure that he will have, you know, inflation protection, you know, his money will keep appreciating, you know, will ensure that, you know, his total corpus, fixed income as well as equity will be protecting its worth. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that's all we have for you in today's episode. Keep watching the space for more information. If you like the show, do subscribe to our YouTube channel. Take care. Bye for now. Thank you.